Oh, hey mateys, and welcome back to another Pirates at Laws gameplay video. Today, we're going to be doing a run with Carpenter in Lost Islands. Um, because this is one of the harder maps, I think I will also be using all the potions here, just to improve my odds and hopefully not die this time, because there's a very high chance that I will, because it's Lost Islands and that's a harder map than the other ones. Um, yeah, the packages I want to use. This one for the multi-hit card, this one also for the multi-hit card, and this one for the damage boosting cards. But before I even try to explain why those are helpful, I should probably go over Carpenter's abilities actually. He gains one focus whenever he attacks. If your focus is greater than six at the start of your turn, you lose all of it and you overload, which means that on your following turn, you will not be able to play any attacks at all. But skills and everything else, those are totally fine. And if your focus is greater than 8 when you overload, you also gain Fragile, which means it's a, which is a status that reduces your armor gain by 50%. So that's pretty, that's pretty scary sometimes, and it's a little bit dangerous as well. But most of the time, um, I mean, Carpenter, his main goal is to pick up a lot of multi hit cards, so he can, first of all, build up his focus pretty quickly, hopefully get to 6 and end his turn, then on another turn later, have six at the start of it, and play some multi hits for some really huge damage, and just burst them down for one turn. And it's fine for him to take a turn of overloading at some point, because I mean, it kind of balances out, because you're getting a huge burst of damage and then you're not getting damage. And if you can get good multi hits, you can make the big burst a lot more worth it. And his cards as well, just some shoots and punches and basic ammo and shields, nothing super great. Eventually, you'll probably want to remove all of these attacks if you can, starting with the shoots, and try to replace them with multi-hits. And then he also has two amazing cards, Meditation. You lose all focus and heal equal to the focus lost this way, but it's removed, so it can only be used once. Uh, I know a lot of people are upset about this design choice, but it's still a really, really good card. In every single fight you do, you can avoid overloading once if you use it right, and you can get healing as the run goes on. So it's it would be nice if it weren't removed, but it's still a really great card. Resupply, um, you lose two focus. Um, you can only play it if you lose two focus. So one of the big downsides is they can't play it on a turn you've overloaded, and that's a little that's kind of sad sometimes. But you also reload two, so he actually has some pretty good reload right at the start. I mean, his ammo balance completely is evened out totally because he has resupply for two. Ammo's and his cost is four total. So yeah, he's totally great for ammo, except he only has two max. So still, he's, he's, he's got a really good starting deck actually. And this also draws a card when it's upgraded. And meditation does double healing when it's upgraded, so those are really good upgrades to have as well. So now that that's done, yeah, there are two cards in these packages that are multi hits, and this one boosts damage, which he already wants to be doing. So. Those are why those are good. So let's start the run. This is currently actually my second attempt. The first time, I actually ran out of storage space for the video, actually, in the middle of it, and it had to pause, and I had to restart. So, yeah, that was unfortunate. I lost the recording. This time we'll get it, though. I wasn't too far, and it was about like 10 minutes, probably. So, oh, I, well, I already I just did that really quickly before I could even explain what these enemies do. They do have their own little gimmick as well, kind of like in Skull's Island and Soul's Rift. Um, there's a new enemy type called Monsters, and oh, perfect, we have a multi heal already. Exactly what we need. But yeah, a monster. Um, whenever you kill one of them, every other monster gets a new intent above their head for their next turn completely different and for each different one they have um, they have their own special move that will happen for them every, every enemy is different these guys they give you weakened in a curse some of them increase their damage a bit they're all different um, you can also tell if an enemy is a monster if it's either an animal or if it has like animal body parts like this guy has the arm like a crab or something I don't know um but yeah so that also means that in this area, area of attack, AoE effects, those are really, really good because you can kill them, all the enemies, 
Well, first of all, it's good for Carpenter because it's multi-hits. Um, but it's also good because you can kill all the enemies at a closer time to each other, I guess. You can maybe get two of them in one turn if you spread out the damage. And that'll mean less of those annoying, powerful abilities that they get. So we have a choice between Mirror Image and Heart of Gold. Normally, Mirror Image is really good with Carpenter because you can, you can copy Meditation. It's actually really, really good. Avoid overloading for like the whole fight. But I don't know, that is just really powerful. We've already done a few runs with Mirror Image. I'm gonna say that would be a good pick, but I don't want to do that every game. So I'm just gonna do this to show something else, because this is also a really good relic. A uh, chain shot, that would be a nice multi-hit, but it's also a three cost, so we don't have enough ammo to actually play that. So I'm just gonna upgrade Meditation, just for more healing. Um, I don't, oh, we could, yeah, we can do the tavern at two events and get even more events later. This is the route to go. Another thing that I didn't mention I forgot about. Um, instead of spending money on repairs, repairing a ship, he spends HP 30 each time. So, I mean, he gets to save money on that, which is nice, but you have to prepare for that HP loss, and that can be a bit risky sometimes. But we don't need it now, we can do that later. Uh, we're gonna remove something. Shoot, always the best option. If you have shoots in your deck, no character in the game wants to play shoots. Oh, let's go left, left, right. Yep, that's the most likely one for early on in a game. And probably just the one you should do every time to start off with. So we have this event now, which is nice. We can go as low as we want, pretty much, because we have Harvest to back ourselves up. I'm going to upgrade Resupply for the card draw from it. Comes really good. And then probably Wooden Shield. We don't need more ammo, because our ammo balance is already perfect. So I'm just going to upgrade my shields for even more defense. And we have the HP, so why not go for another one? This time we upgrade... Mm, we don't need ammo, though. Or we could upgrade an ammo and remove an ammo. That's actually really good. So let's continue. Currently we have three ammo spent each rotation. And... We have 5 ammo gained now, so yeah, it, it would be good if we could remove that, so yeah. These crabs, there are three different types of crabs. There's the big, medium, and large ones, but the common trait is that all of them, they increase their damage by three times whenever another monster is killed. That damage can rack up a ton, especially with the big ones that can... They start off with a 7 damage attack, which then becomes 21. And on top of that, they have a high HP sometimes, not the little guys. But their damage increases by 1 every single turn. So eventually, if you don't kill them on, on the first turn, it'll be... What is it? It'll be 21, and then it'll be um, 24, and it'll be 27, and it just racks up so quickly. Anyways... We got through that fight, I think we healed a bit from Meditation, and we got a Relic. And we have two more events after this fight, and then the boss. I don't think I even used Harvest yet. I could do that if I want to. I don't know if I will yet, but we have that option. I'm gonna try and get it so that with like a range attack or something I can kill both of those enemies in one turn. No, we can't. That's too bad. But it's fine, we can meditate. Why not harvest now, I guess? And we have enough block for that. And, oh no, he has rage. Okay. I'm gonna multi-hit to build up enough- build 10 damage up with it, and there we go. Okay. I mask. Or forge? No, I don't think we do forge. I think being able to crit is pretty nice. It's just a relic. Can upgrade the stuff. Let's upgrade Flurry because we're most likely going to keep that and potentially none of the other ones. Oh, okay. I'll accept this. We might get a fight. We might not. We do. And after this, we get the key, which gives us a chance at the crown relic, which is plus one to hand size. An amazing relic. Oh, yeah. And that there I didn't mention. Um, that chest gives you money when you open it. But you can also you also have the option to just leave it there and not open it, which is also fine because 
In the later areas, it has a chance to pop up the big crab. Those are very dangerous. Um, so yeah. If you don't open it, it just runs off at the end of the fight, and you don't have to fight it at all. So, there's a bit of risk-reward there. I think it's usually worth it to go for the money, though, if you can survive it. The money is so powerful, it just makes your deck better, and that's all it really does. And that fight's over, we healed from meditation, which is nice, and we got the old key. So, overall, very good one there. Barrage, another great multi-hit, but it's also a three cost, so we can't do that. Um, I don't want to upgrade any of these, actually, because we're probably going to take them all out. So I'm just going to leave, I guess. I'm going to sell Axe, because not drawing much cards. Surprisingly enough, okay, hear me out, because normally Shoot would be the obvious one to take out here, but we actually only have four attacks. We want to have a good amount of attacks with Carpenter to be building up our stacks and everything. But we already have too much ammo, right? So maybe it's better to remove an ammo. I think it is, actually. And I'll heal up for the sake of the boss fight, I guess. These bosses are harder. It's in a harder area. So you might, if you don't normally heal up like that and you normally get through it, be careful in this area. <sighs> I've never actually killed that crab on the first turn, but I think if you do, thankfully, I don't think it actually deals 50 damage to you, this boss. I think he changes in intent, because wild. I don't, I've never done that, though. I kind of wonder what that does. I don't think I mentioned it, but Wild is the name of when they change their abilities because another monster dies. Um, I can multi-hit their resupply. Uh, I mean, three attacks, let's just go for the big turn. Overload now, but we have good armor already, so not a big deal. We can block. This deck, actually pretty strong for a first stage deck, actually. Carpenter's not bad. There we go. Alright. Oh my god, another good multi hit. <laughs> That's a three cost. Um, this relic comes from the, the cost package. The one that we enabled for the damage boost things. It's not good though. Almost never worth it, honestly, to have. But it's an 80 cost. If you see it in like a random island battle, I mean, take it and sell it. But I don't like any of these. Um... Curse Shield is a really great card, but we'll probably find it later, honestly. <laughs> Boot, not super great. You don't take 10 damage attacks that often. Although, hmm. I don't know, we can get something better from this. Uh, we can try a crit build, actually. I mean, we already have crit sort of going. I'm gonna try that, because it's a really good relic when you can have it going. And with multi-hits and crits... Rose just is amazing. Anything that crits will be good. You know what we can do here? We can go for this battle, get the Amber, immediately sell it for 80, which is great. Most of your decks are already upgraded, so probably worth it to do. Yeah, let's go for that. That's just a lot of money. And I think I will open this chest here. We might get the 20 HP crab out of it, and we do. But he's gone already. I'm saving my... I'm not playing that attack there because I'm already at 6 stacks. We would overload immediately if we did that. That's probably not worth it. We can... No, oh, that would put us 1 over again. I want to start a turn with like 6 because that's the most you can get out of it. So let's do that. Let's start with 5. 5 is honestly fine. Carpenter actually used to have his limit be at 5, but then they buffed him because people complained. Because, I mean, he kind of was one of the weakest characters. Now he's even stronger, though. I think he- I don't even think he was that bad before. That fight's 
crits over, and none of these are super great. This is a crit synergy card, but it's not a multi-hit. I'd rather be playing multi-hit attacks. Uh, none of these either. We have the money to keep re-rolling if we don't like any of these, and so far I don't. Um, nope. No. I'll take a forge. We have... It's removed and it's upgrades. It means you don't have to spend on any other melee cards we get in the future, so we'll just take it. And our ammo, our ammo balance is already amazing, so it's probably not going to be a problem ammo-wise. Oh, I made a mistake there. I probably should have played the attacks before the one that reduced focus for more damage. That's a thing you can do. It would have been a bit helpful. Oh, we have swordsmanship. There's the crits we needed, actually. And we have the ammo to support it, which is nice. And it's melee crits. This is just really good looking, actually. All right, I'm probably going to upgrade Forge just so... Just so that ammo balance... I mean, we have... We just increased it by, like, four on the first rotation, which is a bit scary. I might try and reduce the cost of Forge. Uh, we can hit three times and resupply. Two shields and five for the next turn. And a swordsmanship. Okay. That's good. And we can avoid overloading. Although, was this a crew battle? I honestly forget. It might have been. That's a lot of damage. Okay, it is a crew battle, and that means we can kill this guy in the front first immediately. These guys don't have any damaging wild abilities, so that's nice. So it's six stacks, which is pretty safe. Oh, we can swordsmanship and have our payoff turn right now. That'll kill this guy in the front immediately. And the fight's over. Okay, we made it out of that with some pretty good HP. We can sell Amber immediately for 80 because we don't need the upgrades from it. We can remove a shoot because we don't need it. I'm going to repair the ship and heal because I don't know if we can do that too soon later. Uh, mark it. I'm going to upgrade Forge just so we can more reliably get it. I'm not going to dig here because there's a chance for a curse in that event. Now we have a fight. Okay. Um, immediate crit. Oh, actually, we already had the crit from our relic, so that was pretty pointless to play. Uh, we can forge. Our attacks, resupply. Also, this enemy here, this turtle shell guy, he's not a mandatory guy to kill, actually, but when you kill him, he gives you a consumable that's permanent, so it's pretty good if you can. Not like a per not like a consumable that you can play every battle. That's not what I mean by permanent, but it sticks through your deck, so I'll have it after the fight. Uh, Inspire, very very good life steal card. It's just amazing healing. And if we're doing these big gigantic crit attacks, that's going to heal us a lot. Um, I'm going to upgrade something here. Probably go for the Inspire because now it goes from 50% to 100% life steal. Oh, uh, we can remove a card. Oh my god. Uh, we are a little on attacks now, actually, but I think I'm gonna remove another punch. Hopefully find another attack at some point. We'll hunt for the extra max HP. I want to get an attack this fight. If we don't, it's a little bit scary. Hmm. Yeah, we need to be able to get that. We still have pretty good damage though from the, the crits, but we're not building up stacks that fast. I'm gonna just kill one of these guys with the survival of the fittest, just get this over quicker. Uh, let's kill that guy, and the resupply, we're at 6, so that's good. Alright, this is a good fight. And we can kill that guy and get another 
Another consumable. This one's max ammo. None of these are attacks. Um, we only have melee crits, so that's not that good. No. Hmm, hourglass, actually. If we're healing a lot from Rose, then we can get shield from that, and that's pretty good, actually. So I'm gonna go back on what I said there. I'm gonna take that. I might remove something else that's not an attack then. Or do I? I might remove a shield. If we're getting block now from this thingy, then we can just thin our deck out and still have enough shield with that. And let's leave and do the fight. All right, swordsmanship. We didn't even have to do that. I did it again. Okay, I'm playing Gift for this, just so I don't have it circulating around my deck, making it too big, I guess. Uh, forge, get that removed as quickly as possible. Let's heal back to full. Okay. Uh, we can go to 8 and then remove them. I probably could have played Swordsmanship there, but that was my mistake. Uh, we can play it here, though. And then heal the full. Block up. And <laughs> this fight's almost over. This guy does a lot of damage. Carpenter, I mean, not this boss. I mean, the enemies in this area do do a lot of damage, but we're out damaging them by a ton. So, it's all good. Alright. <laughs> that was pretty quick. Um, we have a nine card deck. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, this is pretty good. And when we remove everything, it's a six card deck. Let's really hope we can get the crown, because then we can have six cards in hand, six cards in deck. That'd be funny. Um, so of these relics, we're not losing HP, so Pepper's not amazing. I mean, we're not doing a big deck, so we don't need the upgrades from that. We can get something better, I bet. Ribbon, actually. Killing Blows have lifesteal. Some of these bosses... They summon enemies for you so you can kill them throughout the battle. That could be good. Yeah, this one does here. So that's pretty good. And we got that. Okay. So. Uh, I want to hit a tavern. So if I pick up another better melee card, I can remove that. And we can do that at the end. So yeah, let's go this way. And we'll have a six card deck, hopefully, for the final boss. That'd be funny. Um, Forge. Oh yeah, these are the problem enemies here. They're scary. I'm gonna inspire just for next turn. Oh, I was wrong actually. They started at 6, not 7. Still very tough. Still very scary. Look at that damage that comes in there. Any sort of AoE would have been nice to have. Hopefully we can do a big burst turn and kill them both, maybe, especially with crits here. Hopefully, I think we can. Yep. Uh, we do that, and that. And we heal back quite a bit as well. Um, that is... That might be a good card, actually. That's AoE, which we need for this boss. This boss, Lady Octopus, I think she's called. It's a three enemy fight, so that could be good. It's an AoE multi-hit. And we're already we're building up a decent armor. I'm gonna take that. I'm gonna remove the punch later on. And I'm gonna do this, I think. Really, all we can do for these enemies is just go for the one in front first, which is kind of unfortunate. But that's just how it goes. Uh, we can avoid overloading. That's good. Uh, okay, we can get the block there. And some AoE. And survive this fight. And we get to heal with Inspire as well. Let's do the 
upgrade than the punch for the most healing we can get. Okay. Um, here we get... I might just go throw a knife. It's removed. It's decent damage. It's also targeted, so we can target any crabs in the back. Uh, I bet 50 coins here every time. You, know, you either get max HP, or you lose it and get money. Both of those are good. And for that one, I always go for... I always go for the the losing the max HP because you have a chance at getting a bad event in the future if you actually steal. Both of the both options they do give you 50 coins, so it's practically the same until you meet the tavern keeper later, and then you regret it. <laughs> um, we might not have enough AP to get through this. So I'm just gonna do this to be safe. I'll heal back up though, and I like all these relics. So I'm going to leave. Let me get the crown next fight. Not next fight, next event. After this fight. Um, This is a tough one. Um, I don't know what I should play first here. I think I play Flurry and Block and Blind Charge. Um, I'll, I'll just play that to get it removed. Um, life steal that. I didn't need to heal actually there. I probably shouldn't have done that. Oh no. Oh no, we got the fight over. Okay. Um, none of these I like. I'm gonna reroll. Got a relic that we can skip because we already have a, a whole bunch of good relics. And now we have the crown. Okay. It doesn't matter which way we go at this point, so I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna go for the less, less AP. It's usually the best thing to do. Okay, we're getting close to the end. We have the gigantic hand. Um, we can inspire and do that. Those AoE cards are great. I mean, that one costs us a bit of shield, but I honestly think it's worth it here. Mm, I can throw a knife. And then crit, and then this fight's over. Okay. Um, we can once again skip a relic, just to avoid adding a card to our deck, because we like it with this few cards. I'm gonna spend this on one of these guys, because they're normally a problem. Oh, we don't have enough focus to play anything. Mm, I'm gonna inspire and swordsmanship here. That's a lot of injury. Unfortunately, we're a, we're playing a small deck, so any sort of status change isn't gonna happen too much. Um, Curse Shield, like I said, good card that you'll probably find later, but in a small deck, is it better than Wooden Shield? Honestly, it might be, actually. Yeah, we have we have a bunch of healing, so it's just a whole bunch you can get immediately. I'm gonna try that. Do we get an upgrade here? No, we don't. We lose AP. Might just end up staying upgrade at the final fight, but we can remove our other shield. And that wooden shield, not wooden shield, the curse shield, you can get straight to max in one turn with it if you just spend AP, HP. So that's good. Oh, I can't play that. I might do that now and just blind charge all of these guys. I just need 40. And here's another trick as well. If you can, there's, you have a, you have a tiny window to meditation before the fight's over. I'm gonna see if I can get it. Oh, I couldn't. You're able to do that surprisingly enough sometimes. You can sometimes heal at the end of it. I just wanted to show that. Didn't really matter because we healed to full anyways though. Alright, we have enough AP to get the final fight, so that's not an issue. I'm gonna sell that because it does nothing in battle. But all these relics too, these are all pretty good ones. 
And I'm gonna remove Wind Shield, because we don't need that, because Curse Shield is better. Uh, we could remove Forge as well, because all our melee cards are upgraded. And that means we have a six card, we have a five card deck. Uh-oh, wait, do we? Ammo, resupply, that, that. I don't know, we have a six card deck, this is good. All right, the six card deck, final boss. Let's see how this goes. I'm gonna save the Inspire till a bit later. Um, no point in playing any of those. Oh no, we have a curse. Oh, that was bad. Bad decision. Uh, we can play any of those that we have. Consumables, fine. Okay. Yeah, that curse is an issue. I forgot about those. I can curse shield, rack up a ton of damage with that swordsmanship here. And because we have the ribbon, we're gonna heal a bunch of it back as well. So I'm gonna go to max shield. Because kit crit sorry. Any attacks that kill the enemy, they have 25% life steal. So with a crit, uh, let's see how much we get. <laughs> wow, okay. That's pretty good. And we can just get all that back. Save it for later. And that took a huge chunk out of the boss as well. <laughs> and we can do it again. Alright, this time we're inspiring and flurrying first. Um, and here we go. Oh, we didn't crit there. Well, oh well, it's fine. We're about to end it anyways right now, basically, if we can do that again. Yep, that's it. Ah, that was pretty quick, actually. That was a really good deck. That is the power of small decks. And Curse Shield, which is just an amazing card, even when it's not upgraded. And with that much max HP, oh my god, who's that ever powerful? And a good set of relics too. Crits? Oh, those are just amazing. That was a good run. Yeah, I'm honestly surprised I got that one first try. Lost Islands is usually a much more difficult area compared to the other ones. I'd say the most difficult is Northern Lands, then Lost Islands, then Eastern Seas, then these next few in this last to first order. Oh, I almost forgot. I thought, I think I'm gonna, sorry. I was gonna mention the quest as well for Carpenter as well. I probably should have done that for all the other characters, actually, just a few strategies for them, but Carpenters. Um, for this one, the main problem is this one tough fight you have, it's like a boss fight where the enemy has 999 HP. So you need a lot of damage, but the gimmick for that fight is that you have a relic you get at the start of it, which means you cannot overload. So the best strategy for that by far is just stack up every single multi-hit you can find throughout the game, and it'll just pay off in that fight, and you can get some massive damage, and that's what you need for that. So that is my recommendation for the blacksmith. And I think that's it. So farewell, ladies. Good luck on your adventure.